This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. And, well, this week's co-host was supposed to be Holly, but she got sick. Uh, so we we hope Holly gets well and, and, and gets her voice back and everything because, you know, otherwise she, she won't be able to do shows and, and, or anything else. She would be a mute. And that's kind of bad to have for a podcast co-host. Oh, but uh, in all seriousness, Holly, I'm... Hopefully you're listening. Please, you know, do work on getting better. We, we, we would like you to be a better bunny. So, filling in for Holly, we have Jess Kittrick. Hey. Yes, and as our special guest this week, we have Mr. Travis Jones of, of, of what, Bloody Chuckle Studios, or I think it is? Or is that somebody yeah. else I'm thinking? Yeah, Bloody Chuckle Studios. Yes! I got it right! <laughs> yeah! All right! All right. All right, so before we get into everything else, uh, Travis, if you'd like to tell us all out there a little bit about your stuff. Yeah, I am a musician. I run a recording and sort of video production company down here in Georgia, and we do music videos, album review shows on the Internet. We record music, and we just have a lot of fun. Yes, and, th- and all of that stuff, it, it was like, okay, I like this stuff. I like this I watched I watched your uh, first system of down one. I'm like, okay, sold. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, haven't gotten around to the podcasts yet, but I've also got like a whole bunch of other podcasts I need to catch up on too. So yeah, it's it's getting around. I'm there. Really not having any fun. <laughs> oh well, well I will be having more fun because. When this show is up, when this show actually goes up, that will also coincide with the same day that most of the kids around here go back to school. Yay! Yeah, yes. they're already in school over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's gonna Get out of my way, little kids. Damn straight. Ugh. <laughs> oh, so uh, speaking speaking of down here, like, like in Florida and everything, we have another amendment to being prop- propositioned down here. And this is for uh, medical marijuana, allowing like medical marijuana and stuff to happen and, and oh, right. legal and everything. And I think that would be great. Yes. I think they should just totally legalize it and make it u- useful for everybody. But yes. one step at a time. That's so how we have to take. And I found – I don't remember exactly where I found this. But there is a banner out there that is a, is, is a uh, vote no on two thing. And it says, "Will the new face of date rape look like a cookie?" No, oh I don't. God, wait, that's... wait, 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 wait. The new face of date rape look like a cookie. Yeah, because it, it, they are seriously trying to make it look like that. If you what, use... like weed brownies? Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, with pot brownies and pot cookies, and it's like, yeah, that because sure. It's reefer it's madness SCP all over sugar. again. Yeah. It's like, really, really, people, you cannot date rape somebody with pot. No, no, you can't. No, you can't. You can well, make them feel good, yeah. but you can't date rape them. Oh, God, I hate people. Yeah, I, I, I am pretty sure that if somebody was high and you tried to violate them in some way... They would still be able to kick your ass. Yeah, they they totally would, man. I mean, well, it depends because if they have too like, okay, I've never done pot, so I don't know what it's like to be on pot. Mm -hmm. But I do know people who have done pot, and I do know people who've done pot so much that they haven't been able to move. (laughs) So I can't. I have seen like it happen. Like I've seen it happen. Mm -hmm. So in 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 essence. But I think in, in relationship to date rape like a cookie, he would have to eat, like, a whole, a whole bunch store of full of cookies. Yeah. Yeah. It just... would take a lot. You would. <laughs> you would. You would be wasting your money on the amount of pot you would need to date rape somebody. Yes, you would. Oh, my God. And and to top it all off, to top it all off, I don't – I do not like this whole date rape thing anyway, especially when it gets to the point – to where, I mean, well, violation aside, you know, 
to, especially if you get it to the point where the person where your target is not moving. Mm-hmm. That would, wouldn't that make it boring? It's like really. Yeah. I mean, even if know, even if you're not going in for for if you even if you're going in you know for purely power, I mean it's like that's not a challenge, you know. Yeah, you might as yeah, well but... have sex with your wife when she's sleeping. Yeah, and even then that's on it's, iffy it's, ground too. It's weird yeah. because it's weird because there are people out there. Mm-hmm. I disclaimer, I'm not one of them. Yeah. Um that actually find it really sad that's a kink like a kink of like not having your partner move is actually a thing like i actually know people who are like oh yeah that sounds like that's the hottest thing and i'm like okay yeah. Yeah, and it's, that like, is a thing, strokes yeah. for different folks i mean i i don't really you know i'm not gonna question it i'm not gonna like be like oh you're like the worst I, right. here's my thing my thing is is that as ev- as long as every party consents to whatever the hell you're doing yeah, it shouldn't matter. Like I know people who like rape fantasies. I know people who like not, you know, not moving. I like people who like it, you know, weird and crazy and in the shower and weird and stuff. And I don't question it. But at the same time, like, you know, it's just like if you're safe and you're consenting, if both parties or all parties are consenting, then leave them the fuck alone. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's and that is the only time I will look at somebody, you know, like in that situation with like, oh, the person's not moving. Well, we're totally into this. This is how she wants it. This is how I want it. Okay, that's fine. Safe and consensual. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, people! It's like you, you don't do that. Uh, and other things you don't do is, um, well, you don't you do not mock somebody who just lost her father to a. a tragic suicide oh my god can we just fire the internet can that happen because <laughs> yes and i swear to god if i hear one more person say anything bad about zelda williams i'm going to kill them yeah that's yeah, wrong yes. that's just wrong Whoa. It, is. it is just everybody everybody sounds like might be some thunder around somewhere and yeah some thunder down here too the car alarms are going off outside. Oh God, that's <laughs> um, it's bright and sunny in New Jersey. So sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. I love the rain, man. So I'm not complaining. <laughs> as long as it makes it cooler, I'm fine. We're True. actually supposed to have a cookout tonight, so I'm actually kind of happy it's not raining. <laughs> there you go. Oh, so Zelda Williams. Uh, the, the 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 segue into it kind of a clumsy thing kind of a backwards thing to it because as everybody knows by now you know it's been about a week since uh robin williams one of the greatest goddamn entertainers of our generation committed suicide last week uh yeah easy yeah i had wanted to do it for a constructive deconstruction in the past week but life happened and you know sometimes schedules get a little mixed up so it's here on this show (laughs) Or at least talking about it a little bit. We may do an in-depth thing on constructive deconstruction, but that's a whole different thing. So he committed suicide, and everybody is outpouring, you know, for support for his family and his daughter. And, and Except for Westboro Baptist Church, because fuck those guys. Uh, Westboro Baptist Church, they are the mo- they are the worst fucking trolls on the face of the planet. They oh my are. god, did you see the article that they were, like, going to protest his funeral, like, even though it's supposed to be a private ceremony and everything? Oh, I've and seen those. I was oh, like, god. you guys are the dumbest people on the planet. Like, why would you even do that? Okay, here's the thing. The thing, and then the other thing is, oh, he's burning in hell. I'm like, okay, here's the thing. No matter what you believe, it doesn't, okay, here's, here's where I'm going to step out of the religious ring for a second, mm-hmm. in the spiritual ring, because I am spiritual in, in a sense. Right. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter what your beliefs are. To wish that someone is in hell, whether you believe in hell or not, is a terrible, terrible thing. Specifically because, here's the thing. A lot of people a lot of people don't know this, and this is why I got a little pissed off at some people. And granted, I don't know, I don't know if this is true, but there have been rumors for the past several years, like 20 years, that Robin Williams was bipolar uh-huh. and um, it's on the Wikipedia page that he was diagnosed as such. I don't know. Like there is a little like citation next to it, but I don't know where they got that information um, for sure. 
But here's the thing. The thing is, is that everybody has to look at it like this. If he's been suffering with, if he had been suffering for, from depression for that long, that's a victory that he made it to 63. Yeah. That's an absolute victory. There are days where, like, I, I suffer from depression and, and, and bipolar and BPD and PTSD. And there are days where I, like, wake up and I'm like, I don't know if I can make it through today. And the fact that Robin Williams was able to do that for so long and then finally just, you know, tragically take his own life, which is a tragedy. I'm not, like, discoloring that in any way. Right. I'm just right. saying that the fact that he that he was able to find something to keep him going through every day for that long is like inspiring oh, in yeah. so many oh, ways. Yeah. And the fact that people are actually saying to Zelda, Oh my God, you, you, you really, you're okay with this. You're condoning this. Of course she's not condoning it, but she's not going to, you know, she's not going to come out and say, Hey, I hate my dad because he did this. She actually understands like you know what it's what he was going through because she was there with him and she understands like what he she might not understand from a depression standpoint i don't know if she has depression but even if she doesn't she was there for him she was part of his support structure and if you're part of the support structure even if you don't understand you at least have some semblance of being able to tell somebody i don't understand completely but I'm here for you and I support you and I get you and it's okay. Yeah. And it really pisses me off that people are saying things to her like that. When, Like, I just fire the internet. Can we just do that? Like, is that a thing? And at least fire Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Instagram. Fire Instagram. There you go. Twitter, Instagram, you're fired. You're, you just get the fuck off the internet for at least six months. Although that would kind of cripple my, my, my reach around a little bit, but no, 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 no. Okay. That was so the wrong word to use. Yeah, that was. <laughs> but the point is, <laughs> the point is, okay, don't fire them altogether. Fire the higher ups. Have to hire new people in their places, especially higher ups in Twitter that actually takes, you know, that actually take their you know, reporting system seriously. Not only that, but, like, the whole thing, like, Nash brought up uh, earlier this week on Twitter. He was like, yeah, I love the fact that only if you're famous enough do they take the threat seriously. Yeah. Yeah, never mind that there is, um, well, a, a stalking insane burp fetishist that's preying on um, pretty much every kind of woman that's in our little community. But, you know, and he's also paranoid that we're probably talking about him. Well, I just proved him right. <laughs> I don't even need to. Yeah, read or how about that douche that tried to tell me to kill myself in October of last year? Yeah. Let's I not miss this people. game ever. God, I hate people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Travis, you and I should totally get in a boat and just go in the same boat that is labeled We Hate People and just yeah. go up and down the Atlantic co coast, like just throwing things at random people who are douchebags. There you we go. totally should. Oh, God. You'd, you'd need a lot of stuff for New Jersey, though. <laughs> or at least the Jersey Shore. From what I've seen. Yeah, that'll, that'll I don't take know, a couple I don't days. Go there. But... That's no man's land. <laughs> uh, although you might need a bigger boat, because I think there are going to be people who want to join you. Oh. Next will be captain. Yay! <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yes. All right, so there was all of that, and... Um, you know, before we move on to the next thing I wanted to mention before we got to the news is, um, you know, about Robin himself. Um, you know, I know he'll, he'd never know, he had never known me. He had, you know, like everybody else, all of his fans, his friends, he touched a lot of lives and, you know, I'm going to miss him. There's, there, I mainly got into his stand up stuff yeah. more often than his movies because his stand up was amazing and, yeah, I'm well, sad that there's a lot of the movies kind of just yeah. pandered to, you know, like Mrs. Doubtfire. I'm not a fan of that. And it's his oh, movies. Oh, I freaking love Aladdin, though. Aladdin oh, yeah, is, Aladdin's so cool. a, is magnificent. Like, I love a, I, I love that cartoon movie thing. <laughs> yeah. Fun that... fact. Fun fact about Aladdin. 
Robin Williams only did the first and third movies. He did not do the second one. That was uh, Dan Castellaneta. Yeah, yeah see, I didn't also... even know he did the third one, so that's new to me. Yeah, I think it was like all over the advertising when the third one came out. It's like, Robin Williams is back. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please watch yeah, this. Yeah, it's He's something he back. did not want to happen, but they did it anyway, and that's why Robin Williams kind of hated Disney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people hate Disney now. Uh, I have a love-hate relationship. I work them. for the mouse. Yeah. yeah. Do oh, you really? Yeah, that, oh, yeah, that's right, because your show is still on Blip. Blip was bought up by Maker. Maker was bought up by Disney. Oh, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. They they canceled I, our nice. show, but they said that they would take away our upload capabilities in July. But we're still able to upload on Blip, so... Huh. <laughs> yes, I don't know what's going on, so I'm still uploading there until, you know, I guess they shut it down. Yeah, I don't I'd like need... To, uh, I'd like to thank my ex-boyfriend, Kyle, for um, letting me feel him up on camera... Uh, so that I could stay on blip. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I should have, I should have, oh, God. Okay, I don't think there's any woman on Channel Awesome would let me feel them up, so I don't think I could have done that. Damn. Well, mm. it's, um, well, the reason was, was when Kyle and I were dating, I had had this idea forever, and uh, for those people who are listening who actually know who I am and who watched my Dante's Inferno episode with all the corset changes and the ending and what happened in that episode... You totally know what I'm talking about. If you don't, go check it out because it's freaking hilarious. Yes. Is that is that Kyle? Uh, is Alvin? that the? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Really? All right. Yes. Yeah, he's really hot or something. Yeah. He, in in the times I've actually seen him, you know, like all of maybe once or twice in person, <laughs> he, he's he hasn't seemed too awful bad of a person to me. But then again. I, I don't have the other experience set, but anyway, um, to move on from that to something a lot more angering is also, uh, where, where was it? Oh, yeah, Ferguson, Missouri. No, oh, we're talking about racism. Yay. Yeah. It's a lot, America. Yeah, because it's bad enough that a cop shot another cop shot another unarmed black teen for no reason. It's looking, you know... When it first happens, of course, you don't have all the facts yet. But as the facts start coming out more and more and more, it's looking like, yep, people who are calling this just some cop wanted to murder a black kid, yeah, they're calling it right. That's how it's looking from all of this information we're getting. And it goes even beyond that. People immediately protested this, as they should. And so the police, they got scared and decided to enact martial law. And then the looting happened. Yes. And, and then the president was like, the president was like, um, the law and uh, President Obama, okay, here's the thing. Okay, I have two things to say about President Obama. Number one, I don't know why nobody calls him Mr. President. They only call him Obama. That's weird. Anyway, and then the second thing about him is that he had this press conference and was like, this is a terrible tragedy and we need to have all the facts and all of these things and I'm going to be working with the governor of Missouri and because authority needs to be held accountable and thank you, no other questions. And he leaves, and I'm like, okay, you're the authority. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? We need to know what you are going to do. You yeah, it's ridiculous. You just authority is accountable, and you just walk the hell away. You yeah. are contradicting yourself, Mr. President. I elected you, and I kind of like you and stuff, and you're making it really hard for me to like you when you do shit like this. Yeah, just a little bit. But then there was like a small reprieve, you know. I think it, I think it was the governor of Missouri got the cops in in uh, Ferguson to kind of back off a bit. But right before the show, it's like the cops are doing the whole thing again. They put martial law back in, and there's even a curfew. They yeah. have a yeah, curfew for all of their citizens. Yeah, five. Fuck that shit. I you know so I don't violated normally... the curfew. Yeah, so like there were pictures of um you know people violating the curfew and the weirdest part was um did any did either of you see that tweet that was going around um it was on tumblr but it was also on twitter as well um you know it was said something about how um tell me how racism has changed in the last 50 years and it's a picture of a black and white picture of what happened 50 years ago and a color picture of what was happening in ferguson and oh, it was yeah. almost the exact same picture 
Mm-hmm. And I showed this to my dad's girlfriend, and she's like, this is just freaking horrible. Like, I hate it. And I'm like, yeah, because people don't understand that you can make a law that says no more racism, but that doesn't mean that there's not going to be any more racism. Exactly. We have laws that say you can't murder people, but murder still happens. Yep. Exactly. It just means that now we can punish you if we catch you. Well, we being, you know, the law. Right. You know. Um, it's it, Here's the thing about Ferguson. Ferguson is like one of those, uh, is going to be one of those morality questions for like the next few years about like what happens when the police take it too far. Like when um, you have a town who is upset and who is asking for accountability and the police, who are mostly white, and the town, I think they said two-thirds of the town is completely African-American, mm-hmm. and there's only one African-American police officer on the force. Yeah. And the majority of them are white. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there scratching my head going, well, if the people are afraid to come to you while you're in a position of authority, that is not, you know, that is not government by the people. That is, that is inhib- that's actually creating an environment where you're, like, basically saying, hey, we're here for you, but not really, because we will gun you down if we think you did something that was, you know, over three quarters of a mile away and you changed your clothes and you were totally looked like this kid who happened to rob this store five minutes ago. But we're totally not going to ask you any questions or anything while you're putting your hands up and surrendering to us. We're just going to shoot you because we think that you're the you're the wrong person. Oh, and by the way, anybody who listened to the dispatch, um, they didn't even mention a robbery. Just saying. Uh huh. Yeah, it's just I'm I'm just gonna call it. It's just like a lot of other people are saying. A lot of people are thinking. Yeah, why did this cop shoot this kid? Because he's black, and because he yep. didn't. He probably didn't like the way he was walking or where I he hate, was walking. He was I living hate, while black. I hate people who pull the race card and say, "Oh well, you know, he pulled me over because driving while black." You know, I mm-hmm. I hate people who do that. But in this case, it is completely true. Yep. There is, there has been no evidence to the contrary where I see walking like I do not see anything else but walking while black. I really do not. And yeah, everything uh, that comes out of the Ferguson Police Department, I'm just kind of like, guys, stop digging yourself a bigger hole for the love of God. Yeah, it's, it's, they guys, wonder why people hate the police so much nowadays. Exactly. Ay, goddamn. And 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 of course there is. I had I had a thought. But while I try and regain that thought, I want to tell the Ferguson Police Department, shut the fuck up. And... Well, here's the weird thing. Like, in, in terms of... Uh, now, I, I used to live in a city with 10 million people. I used to live in New York. Here's the thing about the New York Police Department. Depending on what neighborhood you're in, is the neighborhood police department is that demographic. So, like, when I was living in a Spanish neighborhood, I had a lot of Spanish police officers in my neighborhood so that people felt safe. When you go to Times Square, there are a lot of white cops there because there are a lot of white tourists. Like, mm-hmm. it's New York Police Department has gotten really good about that kind of thing. And granted, not every area is safe because, you know, there are still some issues with demographics in terms of police part- department versus population. But in terms of the major areas where I have lived, the demographics of the police department versus the population usually coincide with each other. Yeah. At least in Manhattan and parts of Brooklyn. I don't know about Queens. I, I've never had to deal with the police in Queens or Staten Island or the Bronx. Mm-hmm. But for the police officers that I did deal with in Brooklyn and Manhattan, they're pretty close to the demographics of their area. So, I mean, New York NYPD is pretty smart about that kind of thing. So I don't understand why the rest of the United States cannot be that smart either. I don't know why either. I mean, I mean I, I'm honestly kind of thinking about looking at our own police department over here and seeing the demographics on that one because there are a bunch of white people here but there are a whole lot more black people (laughs) and a lot and a whole lot more latino people too there's a lot of non-white people in this town oh so and also there's 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 that thought I, i was trying to have earlier it just came back into my head um, you know how, like, the NRA, the Tea Party or whatever, they're, they're cl- calling for more guns to defend themselves against government tyranny? Yeah, where the fuck are you guys now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's they're black. I just want to, uh, I just want to say, like, one last thing on the Ferguson thing. Um, there, actually, somebody, I don't know who it was, but somebody actually looked online to see how many people, like, how many 
African American officers gunned down white people versus how many white police officers have gunned down African Americans. And white police officers gunning down African Americans is significantly higher by like a lot because there was only one instance of a white police officer that we found that uh, or a white teenager being gunned down by a black police officer. So shut the hell up. It's not a race thing. Yeah, I mean, it is. It, it pretty much is at this point. Nobody should nobody should be gunning down innocent people to begin with. But you look at the demographics, like you just said. Yeah, I can't. I can't make any other conclusion. I honestly cannot. Absolutely. Oh, but but uh, unless you've got a little bit to add there, Travis. I know we've been kind of talking, and you haven't really been able to say much. Yeah, I've sort of. He's just over been... there hating people. Yeah. Yeah, I've just sort of been agreeing with what y'all saying, silently nodding my head, going, yeah, these, it's just, you know, it's, and the thing about it is, it's like that everywhere with how the cops treat people, and it's, even with the whole, you know, we gotta have our guns thing, you know, they're trying to, I don't know, if, if you're like, it's, it's so weird, man, it's just so weird, it's, it's really disgusting, and it, it shows People are always, oh, you know, fuck the police, and other people are like, well, you need the police to protect you. But it's like those people, they don't, they don't see, you know, the reality behind the situations and things, and mm -hmm. it's just crazy, man. It's just crazy. Like the town that I live in, we've already had like 15 murders or so this year, and we had two just the other day and i do i'm a i'm a meals on wheels driver as my day job and i deliver in a lot of those neighborhoods and my truck was stolen one day when i was was stolen one day when i was out on my route Ooh. and you know yeah it was crazy and uh it's just you you see this stuff and you're like man you know i do want to build walls around my house and have guns you know because there's there's a lot of idiots out there. I don't know, man. <laughs> and the problem is, some of them wear a uniform. Exactly. Yeah, uh, that's exactly. the biggest issue. The biggest issue is... is I have... Yeah. 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 I can't hear their chest. Yeah. Uh, what, what happens when the oppressor... Um, is just being so oppressing that the people do have to rise up and say, no, this cannot lo no longer be the sat status quo. And I think that's what we're seeing in Ferguson right now is that the people are finally saying, hey, cut your shit out, man. And you got that police officer just the other day, uh, this video came out where he's like, Obama doesn't follow the Constitution, so we shouldn't have to either. Oh, f Bullshit! Oh, <laughs> yeah. bullshit! The president doesn't follow the Constitution. <laughs> oh my God! Can I, that guy I has since like resigned. strangle that person? Because swear to God, here's the thing about the here's the thing about you know everybody saying the president doesn't follow the Constitution. No, 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 no! It's not the president's fault. It is Bush's fault because Bush passed that Emergency Powers Act, where yes. Obama can pretty much do whatever the hell he wants because Bush yes. was like. Nobody opposed Bush when he pushed that pushed that bill through that said, hey, because we're in a state of war, I totally have emergency powers and I can do whatever the hell I want. And nobody questioned him because he was a white guy. But when a half black president totally like says, I'm going to use all these emergency powers that the previous president used to make things right and to send troops to places that need all these places. And everybody goes, whoa, 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 wait a tick. You're violating the Constitution of the United States. What the hell is your problem when the first guy who happened to be white did it first and everybody's like, oh, no, it's because because he's black. We don't trust him as much. No, you guys, that's not how it works. It works that you people elected him. When 2016 comes, you guys can elect whoever the hell you want. But for right now, you have to respect his authority and like deal with the fact that he's going to use the laws that white people enacted to get his point across. OK, it's just the way it is. So deal. OK. I feel like Jessica Williams. Have you guys seen that Jessica Williams thing where they're like, you know, stand your ground defense. It's like it's like bleach. It, it works wonders for your colors, but it'll ruin. It works wonders for your whites, but it will ruin your colors. Oh, I've seen that gift set going around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing. She's she's my hero. 
Yes, that is amazing. Oh, but yeah, I, I cannot disagree with that. It's like, guys, stop being assholes. Stop being hypocrites. He, yeah. He's playing by the rules that were set up by Bush. Yeah, pretty much. And if you want to whine about it, well, go on the internet and complain. Oh, wait, a lot of people do already. Like us. Yeah. Oh. Speaking of things to complain about, let's go ahead and hit our news before we run out of time. <laughs> that would uh, be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, that would be. And yes, an apologies for the damn ominous thunder throughout the whole show. Yes. Um, yeah, the... the what are uh, you guys doing, a seance? What the hell's going on? I don't know. Somebody is somewhere. Yeah. God damn it. We got uh, my buddies in there playing with the Ouija and <laughs> just had a demon come in here a moment ago and... Oh, was that guy. what that loud noise was? <laughs> yeah, yep, it was a demon. They summoned demons over there. The devil did go down to Georgia. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Every day, man. Every day. There you go. Uh, the devil is also going other places, apparently, because a new bill being pushed by Senate Republicans will effectively allow adoption centers to discriminate against same-sex couples if those organizations don't approve of homosexuality. Guess which recent Supreme Court decision regarding a certain Christian craft store they are using to justify it. Fuck you, Hobby Lobby. Oh my god. Can't we just get past this already? I mean, let people do what they do. Yeah. The end. The end, man. It's not affecting you personally. No. Okay, it's like, it's like when you go to a restaurant and you order a piece of cake and somebody says... I don't want that person having cake because it's yeah. growing my cake. Take it away from them. Seriously. Yeah. It's like, hello, you guys, what the hell? I, Let's all have thing. cake. Here's my thing. My thing is, if it's not hurting anybody and it's not breaking the law, then shut the hell up. Yeah, well, the problem is they're wanting to make it a law. That's well, the problem. Yeah, that's part of the problem, but so far it's not a law, so yeah. shut the hell up. There have been a lot of troubling developments since the Supreme Court gave Hobby Lobby and other Christi Christian businesses free reign over what rules they have to follow, but this might be the most sickening. No shit. According to the logic of what Republican Senators Mike Enzi and Mike Kelly sardonically call the Child Welfare Provider Inclusion Act of 2014, inclusion my ass. It isn't fair that Christians who believe gay people make bad parents are forced to allow those same gay people to adopt children through their facilities. They believe they have the God-given, literally, right to discriminate. According to the bill, government shall not discriminate or take an adverse action against a child welfare service provider on the basis that the provider has declined or will decline to provide, facilitate, or refer a child welfare service that conflicts with or under circumstances that conflict with the provider's sincerely held religious beliefs or moral convictions. No! Fuck. My moral conviction is that those people don't deserve to be parents. Does that mean we can take away their kids? Oh, God, if that were only true. <laughs> yeah. The problem is, where would we, where then would we have to put the kids, too? There's also that, and the system is clogged up enough as it is. So this allowing, you know, being okay and allowing gay parents, which, by the way, if, if I'm remembering right, and I might be, there have been studies that show that gay parents are kind of better at this point <laughs> than straight yeah. parents, straight parents not to say that straight parents are completely and totally horrible is just on the whole you know gay parents are better because guess what gay parents they can plan a little bit better they can adopt or if you're we're talking lesbians here they can get the in vitro from a willing donor and they can they can actually have a child when they are ready Yes. But they don't. Ha they don't have to worry about accidents. They don't have to worry about, you know, oh my God, did the pill work or did the condom break? And it doesn't matter if you're straight or gay. Anybody can be a bad parent. Oh yeah. Very much so. And and the fact that there's the one other thing, the reason why it's a good thing that they are able to have like the ultimate of family planning, the child would definitely be wanted. Yes. Because it's not always a thing if, you know, you know, a heterosexual couple has a child, that child may not be wanted. I've had a cousin that, at least for a little bit, she didn't want one of her children. For whatever reason, I don't even remember it. I mean, she's changed now, but at the time, she didn't want the kid, and I felt really bad for the kid. So it was just, you know, things like that happen. That very rarely happens with a gay couple. And I, and I always give that little mark, 
you know, margin of error because you might have the gay couple where one is like all gung ho about adoption, the other one just submits and goes with whether or not they really want a child or not, you know, that sort of thing. But but that's a whole different topic right there. Uh, in a statement released by the senators, they argued that this bill is simply meant to ensure children can continue to get pair, care rather from people of faith. They don't no. mention the fact that it's the Christian organizations which have folded their arms and refused to provide the service if it can't be on their terms. Ensure children can, can, you, can continue to get care from people of faith. You know what? There are plenty of homosexual couples out there that are religious, that are Christian. Yes, we. There's even some uh, openly gay pastors out there. And uh, since I'm just going to George Carlin to this next story, Fremont Unified School District superintendent has temporarily shelved a controversial ninth grade health textbook after roughly 2,200 parents and residents took issue with its sexual bondage topics and other material and demanded it be kept out of the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the kids are going to find out about it one way or another. I mean, maybe it shouldn't be in the school, but I mean, the Internet's there. I mean, I've seen things on the Internet that I didn't know existed. Yeah. Superintendent Jim Morris will ask school board members Wednesday to place the book, Your Health Today, on hold until it's fully vetted following concerns from the community that would expose teens to topics on sexual fantasies, sex games, as well as themes that include ropes, handcuffs, sex toys, and vibrators. <laughs> and if you keep all of this from them outside of school, then they're going to probably do the stupid thing and read Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. Yeah. Just future my, tip... Yeah. My comment on it, Oh, actually. yeah. Future tip, children, if you if you really want to get yourself acclimated into the fetish culture and the BDSM culture early and all of that, don't do it through Fifty Shades of Grey, okay? That's why we have the internet. That's why we have I, – I have friends who are in this community. They could – you know, I will, I will point you to them. I, you I'm to, one of them. We'll see. She's one of them. We learn something new every day. All right. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about this 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 bull crap, okay? First of all, here's two lessons you need to learn from from me, okay? I'm apparently going to be how to be a better criminal with Tara. Sorry, Tara. But here's the thing. Never pay for porn. Ever. Yes. If you're paying for porn, you're doing it wrong. I, okay? I, I, I slightly disagree with that because porn Not, actors do need to be paid too. Well, yeah. too, but here's the thing. I have a friend who in his freshman year of of college spent like $900 on porn. Mm -hmm. and Jesus. I'm, like, I'm not naming names, but at that point there was the internet where you could get free stuff. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, and the second thing you guys need to learn is here's the thing. If you don't inform your children about what's going on with their bodies and like what changes they're going through and like what sexual arousal actually means. And this kind of ties into the whole gay thing, yeah. by the way. Oh, yeah. is if you don't let them explore who they are and what they're doing, you're going to wind up like me and be a very frustrated 18-year-old virgin who just, like, fucks the first thing that moves. So, you know, that's actually how I met Joe. Um, before Ouch. that, my parents, my parents didn't even tell me. Like, my dad wasn't really, you know, around because he was doing business and stuff, but, like, my mom didn't even tell me, like... I screamed when I got my first period because I thought I was bleeding to death. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Yeah. Did you, did you, did you did, okay, obviously you did not share a mom with Carrie, but God damn. No, no, I didn't. But I was like, I was like, oh my God. And because like at that point in time, like our sex education didn't start until eighth grade mm -hmm. and I was in seventh grade. So I wasn't there yet, and my mom didn't really tell me anything other than after the fact. And then when I started having sex, she brought me to the OBGYN to get birth control, but she never really told me, like, why. And here's a fun fact for you kids. Um, before I was 18 and I went to an OBGYN, I thought you could get pregnant from a blowjob. <laughs> oh, God. That's... Yeah, that's how, that's how lacking my sex education was. Yeah. Um, I was raised Roman Catholic, which explains most of those things. <laughs> <laughs> but for the love of God, educate your children. Oh, my God. If you don't educate your children, I am allowed to go to your house and 
whip you in the face until you do it, okay? There you go. Because don't be don't be like my mom. Be like the awesome parent I know that I'm going to be and let your children know that yes, it might not be a good idea to, you know, be sexually active in your teen years mm-hmm. until you think you're ready. But yeah. at the same time, don't tell your kids, oh, you'll learn about it when you're older. Don't do that, okay? That shit is bad. Yeah, because guess what? They're in their teen years. Guess what? They're older. Yeah. There you go. And I don't even have a problem with the age range that they're looking at here either because they're looking at, you know, ninth grade. Ninth grade okay, is that's, freshmen. That's, that's re- yeah, that's reasonable because in high school, high school is when some people become sexually active. Yeah. Not everybody, but some, most. Some people become sexually active a little sooner. Some, I was one of them. some do. And there and then the other thing is is okay, not to bring up the whole rape thing again, but what if you're raped under the age of, you know, ninth graders or what? 13, 14 years old? Yeah. Okay. What if you're raped under the age of 13? What are you going to do? How are you going to learn about your sex education if you get violated like that and nobody tells you what the hell is going on with your body? Like, yeah. why are you bleeding? Why is everybody trying to touch you there? Because they want to know if, if, if it was if you have abrasions or not. And, like, what people want to do, like, touch you and stuff. And, you know, when you, when you get assaulted like that, you don't want people touching you. It's yeah. just a fact. Like, you know, it's, it's just something that just doesn't ha- you want to happen. And then you have to, on top of it, explain to them, like, oh, well, the reason we're touching you is because we're trying to assume this. No, just tell your kids. I think the optimal age to start talking about, you know, sex education, it might be a little young to some people, but I think by the time it's a child is 9 or 10 years old, they can at least start to learn about it because kids are getting their periods earlier and earlier for some reason, and they don't know why. And I think that 9 and 10 is the optimal age. Now, if your kid gets a period before 9 or 10, then duh, talk to him before that. But yeah. if not, talk to him between 9 and 10 or 11 or somewhere in that range when they're between 5th and 6th grade so that they know what the hell they're getting into so that when they enter middle school, they're not waiting on professors telling them, oh, you can't learn about this because you don't understand it. Your par- parents should be responsible for their kids' sex education on top of the schools. Yeah, just- my <clears throat> My parents told me when I was seven years old. I don't think my parents ever had the talk with me. Uh, I just learned the, at least the basics through porn. You know, basics as in, you know, me being heterosexual. Okay, my penis goes in there. Okay. I mean, until I was 18, I didn't really know a lot about sex ed other than, like, you know, how to put on a condom using a banana. Because um, <laughs> my sex ed teacher used a banana. For a penis, and then showed us how to do it with a banana for some reason. Yeah, I actually figured out how to do it on my own. They, they didn't have that in the sex ed down here, and this was before Florida went uh, abstinence only sex education. Yeah, and like and I was lucky because I was raised in New York where they don't only teach abstinence only, they actually do try to give you other things. But like it was really weird because um, when I was 15, the way I learned about um, after I had had my sex ed class and they had said masturbating is okay, mm-hmm. like I went home and experimented. There you like, go. Like I totally did. Like I didn't even care. Like, you know, my mom caught me a few times and got mad at me because she's like, what the hell are you doing? And, you know, but after that, I was like, you know what? It feels good. Why should I stop? Exactly. And that's the attitude to have. I think when, I'm going to say when because I, I would like to have at least one kid one or two kids before I shuffle off of this mortal coil. But if, you know, when they reach the... Yes, just the (laughs) mortal coil. You know, but when they reach that age where they start experimenting with their bodies, if I happen to walk in upon them, after the initial, oh my god, I didn't really want to see that, I will sit them down and I will say, okay, look, I I, I freaked out because I really did not want to see it, but don't let that stop you. Please. Continue on. Just, just, I know now to actually knock before going into your room. And amend, <laughs> Clean up when you're done. Please. And amend, and amend, and amending the um, whole feel good if it's until, like, stop, like, if it feels good, stop. Don't, like, okay, that's a good rule for yourself. Yeah. But when it comes to other people, make sure they consent first. For the love of God, I do not want to be responsible for people raping people because they're like, well, it feels good, stop. And Jess said it was okay. 
Yeah, please. Just, I'm just... not an authority figure. Please do not take my advice. <laughs> I can barely use a knife. Come on, guys. There you go. <laughs> okay, so so to kind of kind of bring it up a little bit because this guy, he is just just fucking silly. Rick Wiles announced on his. What the hell is that? Uh, well, well, we're gonna find out. He announced oh, on sorry. his. Yeah, he announced on his Christian talk show program that a bowler could solve America's problems with atheism, homosexuality, sexual promiscuity, pornography, and abortion. This is just kind of a sexy show. Wiles, host of True News, host of the True News show, rather, seemed enthusiastic about the outbreak and the potential for it to kill the groups of people he despises. It may be the great attitude adjustment I believe is coming, he said. Wiles is also on the record for claiming that President Obama may intentionally spread the disease so that he can have the power to declare martial law. He believes that this is the opportunity the president has been looking for to throw people into FEMA camps. Ebola has no prejudice. No. So that guy could easily, if, if it were to break out in America, he could easily be one of the first ones to get it. Yeah. Or... Um, I, I just want to point out that during that entire time that you were reading that, um, I must have face palmed like 12 times. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, really, dude? It's like, like, back when AIDS was first coming out, you know, oh, God created AIDS to kill off the gays. Like, no, no. Oh, Freddie my Mercury God. Freddie Mercury sparkly pants back. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Oh. And well, of course... here's my issue with people who say stuff like this, and this is the same issue I have with Rush Limbaugh, actually. Let's, yeah. Let's, oh, let's talk about that asshole for three seconds. Oh, um, God, fuck him. Atheism. Okay, here's the thing. We have freedom of religion in this country. Next! Yeah, Homosexuality. Okay, Please. yes, it's still legal in some states to, you know, do a dude in the ass. I get that. But, yeah. I mean... Even though, even though sodomy has been, you know, sodomy laws have been declared un unconstitutional at least ten years ago. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Whatever. And then the other thing is, is even if it's not uh, okay, you know how many gay pride parades we have in this country? Come on, guys, seriously. Sexual promiscuity. Well, I guess I'm going to hell. So am I. Um, pornography. Seriously. Well, I guess I'm definitely going to hell. I'm going to super hell. I've got half a gig at least. And speaking of abortion, um. I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to hell. And here's the thing, and I know I've mentioned this before on, on Thespian Talk when I was on, like, last time or the time before that, whatever. Mm -hmm. Abortion is a very grueling experience. People who have had them, at least in my experience and people that I've talked to about it having it, which I have had one, mm -hmm. they hate talking about it to other people that they don't trust. Right. And... The fact of the matter is, is that you're basically telling me that because I had to make one of the worst decisions of my entire life, I need to be wiped off the face of the planet. Yeah. If it weren't for the Roe versus Wade law, we would have many, 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 many more women dead because of back alley abortions mm -hmm. than we do now because of the wonderful miracle that is Planned Parenthood. Yes. So, fuck Rick Wiles. Fuck Rush Limbaugh, and everybody should go to Pl Planned Parenthood where you get free condoms and free birth control all the freaking time. Oh, sweet. I and there's people that. like him that give Christianity such a bad rap. Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Let's evolve, please. Let's yes. just evolve. I mean, I have no issue with, you know, the religion itself. I don't exactly. follow it because I don't agree with it. Hell, I'm dating somebody who's a Christian. In fact, we, you know, we with the site pickups, we picked up a guy who reviews like all these independent Christian films and who is a Christian himself. I, I obviously have no problem with Christianity or Christians in general. It's exactly. assholes like Rick Wiles who make the good ones look bad. Exactly. I know a bunch of them who are, you know, really, really great people and have interesting things to talk about within that religion. You know, I'm a, I'm a spiritual person too. You know, but I try to know and understand 
you know, everything. And, you know, I might not understand this part of a religion. I'd like to talk to somebody who is a part of that religion, you know, but when you get idiots who say shit like that, it's like, really, dude, you are, you are saying the, the, the exact opposite of what your religion is supposed to be about. Exactly. You know, I firmly believe that, um, you know, for the sake of argument, uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, Jesus hates the gays, Jesus hates these yeah. guys, Jesus hates all these people. And I'm thinking to myself, every time somebody says that, the first thing out of my mouth is, if Jesus hates all these people so much, then why the hell hasn't he, if he and he's this all-powerful God, then why the hell hasn't he wiped us all out yet? Exactly. Seriously, isn't Jesus love? I mean, really? Really? He's supposed I mean, to be. God. You know, I, I'm tired of having to tell people this. Um, if you're a God-fearing Christian, practice what your God preaches. Yeah. Yes. Not what Please. you preach. Yeah. Just, just, just a little bit there. Oh, and our last story uh, uh, for this week, because we've got like less than ten minutes, and it could take a while. Who knows? Uh, take a shot. It's out of Florida. Hooray! Oh. And oh, it's yay, Florida. And it's out of South Florida. It's the Florida Keys. Ooh. So, so yeah. Exotic. Mm. Oh, yeah, very exotic. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's not even it's not even good enough to be the main part of Florida. It's it's the piss <laughs> drops of Florida. <laughs> a Florida Keys man was arrested after beating his girlfriend after he had a dream she cheated on him, according to police. Harless <sighs> Gascon's girlfriend told Monroe County Sheriff's deputies that Gascon beat her all day Friday. She was able to call for help at 6:45 p.m. after Gascon passed out. Now, you know, this is horrible. It really, really is. You should not do this. I also find the, the circumstances leading to the horrible kind of amusing in a way because I've heard so many jokes over the years from different comedians where the guy would be sleeping and then, you know, he would wake up to his wife punching him because she had a dream that she, he had cheated on her. And that's supposed to be a joke. That's supposed to be funny. Ha ha. You know, you laugh You laugh at the man's minor discomfort. And if this had, if, and if all this had been was somebody's minor discomfort, then we could laugh it off a little bit more, I think. Because, to me, comedy and slapstick and the like knows no gender. But that's not what happened here. This is not slapstick. Or if it could be slapstick if you have an extremely dark sense of humor, which I have a dark sense of humor, but I'm not that dark. And then let me let me give you the rundown. The woman accused Gascon of choking her, pouring hot coffee on her, cutting the, cutting the back of her leg with a knife, and threatening to kill her while holding a knife to her throat. He also allegedly picked her up and slammed her down on a glass table, breaking it. And she also alleged, and the girlfriend also alleges that he picked up his dog, slammed it on the ground, and put his foot on the dog's neck. Ah, no, 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 no. No, hey, fuck hey, this guy. Fuck this guy yeah. five I times really, over. I least. really love that at the end of this, it says it is unclear if he has an attorney. Well, oh my God. well the state... I think that's the funniest part of this article. Yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, God. I, I, I usually, you know... We'll do some running of this by uh, Becky when I'm looking through news stories. I told her outright before I even read this to her. I said, grab your dog, hug your dog. And then I read the no news story to her, and then she hugged her dog again. That, that is one of those stories because it's bad enough you, you are – well, you're a girlfriend beater, dude. That, that, you're bad enough. But What did the dog do? Yeah. Seriously. My god. No, it's just, oh, what the fuck, man? Jesus Christ. And we don't know if the dog survived or if it died, but, but I, ho I hope the dog survived. I, and me, a non-dog person, hoping this. So it's just, holy fuck, dude. And why? Because you had a dream she cheated on you. So fucking what? Yeah, it's just a dream, dude. Like, I have dreams all the time, man. Like, I, I have dreams of me buying dinosaurs, man. You know, what's up with this, dude? I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I have yeah. sex dreams with AJ. That's about it, though. Well, there yeah, you go. Like, and that's God. a hot dream. Just, just... That's a really hot dream, guys. You have no idea. Yeah. I mean, I have dreams that, that, that well, honestly, they're not really that, that really interesting right now. But the point is, 
it's just in your mind, literally in your mind. That's exactly. all it is. Exactly. It's it's nothing that really happened. Oh Here's my the thing. god! How dare Here's you cheat thing. on like, me in my I dream? I can kind of understand. Like I could kind of understand if he like, you know, have you guys ever had those dreams that like they're so vivid that they actually feel like they're real? All the like, time. Like before you wake up. All like, the time. I'm not justifying it, but if he had one of those dreams, I can completely construe why he would think his girlfriend was cheating on him. Like, if it was, like, a legit, oh, my God, this is actually happening kind of dream, Mm -hmm. which I've had before, and they're kind of amazing if they're about the right content, but if they're not, they're kind of terrifying. Oh, yeah. So, I'm not justifying it for him. I'm not saying he's right. I'm just saying that, from his point of view, it could have been one of those things where he's just like... My girlfriend's totally cheating on me. Now I need to turn into a green rage monster. And yeah. I don't condone beating other people unless it's, you know, for a really, really good reason. Mm-hmm. Like, they hit you in the face first. That's a really good reason. Oh, yeah. Um, but other than that, I don't really think that there's a reason to beat somebody else first. No. Um, just saying. Yeah, just a bit. I mean, yeah, if you have to confront her, confront her. Sure. Non-violently. Now, if she starts throwing shit at you, then you defend yourself, but... Yeah, yeah but if she's not going to throw you, anything at you and you're going to basically say, hey, um, were you, were you, have you cheated on me? And she says, no, then leave it. Yes. Like, don't friggin'... And then if you go... Oh, and here's the other thing. Boys, here's the worst thing that you could possibly do to a woman. If she says no and you hire a private investigator to follow her around... We hate that shit. Don't do it. Yeah. It, it, that just shows us two things. Number one, you don't trust us as far as you can throw us. And number two, you're never getting sex from us again. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, yeah, have, you know, have, have fun with your hand there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and you better hope that once that relationship is over that um, you find somebody desperate enough to fuck you again. Yeah, uh, seriously. Well, desperate or ignorant because you, you never know. We, Either we way, it's terrible. It <laughs> is. It is very terrible. But, yeah, I'm glad this guy is, you know, he's in jail. He, he is He is arrested. He is, he is away. Hooray. And with that bit, we are going to go ahead and get out of here for this week because, yeah, <laughs> it has been one of those weeks. Uh, thank you to the Thunder for coming in and, and kind of, you know, like making our show a little bit interesting. Oh. Um, so uh yeah so uh, I do what i can there you go <laughs> so uh so travis if Fuck we you, wanted Georgia. To, yeah so travis if we wanted to uh find you on the internet where could we find you uh yes i had a couple of places you guys can hear our music on reverbnation.com slash monster ft studio and soundcloud.com at uh, soundcloud.com slash bloody chuckle studios and then you can check us out on uh, all of our videos on youtube slash monster ft studio and blip.tv slash monster one and you can check us out on twitter at uh what do you call it monster ft studio and uh yeah instagram too if you want goofy behind the scenes photos bloody chuckle studios Sweet. And Jess, where can we find you? Everywhere. Um, <laughs> I'm a friggin' ninja. I'm probably in your living room and you don't even know. Um, in, fact, in fact, she just I, showed up in my bedroom. I thought I just saw her. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, if you really want to find me, because God, why would you? Um, <laughs> I'm on Facebook. I have a Fool's Gold Facebook page that you guys can all like and stuff. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of sad, but yeah, it's, it's shameful plugs, but what do you want from me? Uh, oh, you can follow me for. on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Raven Alegria 13. You can also find me on Tumblr at Raven Alegria 13.tumblr.com. Uh, you can ask me all sorts of questions like, um, what am I reviewing next? Why haven't you put out a review in the last month, you idiot? Or my personal favorite question, why were you such a terrible person to Kyle? If I get one more of those questions, I'll probably kill you. Um, <laughs> you could also find me on Instagram, although I don't really post as much on Instagram as I should. Oh, I hate the shit. I hate the shit. No, no, not again. There it goes. What is that? I don't, I don't know. know what that is, but it's on your end, and it's really weird. 
Yeah. How do, you, it, how do you know it's on my end? I I think I think she's looking at the thing, and when the thing goes up, your your uh, thing is uh, highlighted. Yeah, your thing is highlighted. It's really weird. Anyway, yeah, um, we it it started flaring up when you were going onto your Instagram. Okay. Uh, if you want to find me on my Instagram, I'm also at Raven Allegria 13. Basically, Raven Allegria 13. You can find me anywhere. I also have a website, um, foolsgoldenage.blogspot.com. I also am on Nerdvice in RT Gomer Productions, and I am, although I haven't posted any content on RT yet, um, I'm hoping to in the next month, but not sure yet. Yeah. Um, depends on a bunch of reasons. And if you want to find me on Blip, I'm at blip.tv slash fools-gold. Um, and if you want to, uh, you know, see, uh, see me at any upcoming conventions, um, the only convention I'm currently planning on going to is MAGFest. So if you want to come to MAGFest, you are more than welcome to come by, say hi, um, you know, take selfies with me, it's cool, whatever. Um, if you really love me, you'll bring me something Avengers related. Yay! And if you really, really love her, you'll do what I do and, and donate to her Patreon, too. Oh, yeah, I have one of those, don't I? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we find that one? Uh, that's, uh, the, uh, my Patreon is, um, patreon.com slash ravenallegria13. Um, actually, if you really want to, in the next two weeks, I'm hoping to re-update it, um, based on current events going on in my life. Um, and expect an update video from me probably tomorrow on my blip page, uh, basically describing what's been going on uh, ever since I moved to New Jersey and um, all of those fun things. Also, uh, my Con Bravo crossover should be out by the end of the month. Sweet! And, and will that be on all of the various sites you'll be putting them on to? Uh, yeah, I will be probably, my premiere episode of uh, on RT Gomer Productions will probably be the Con Bravo crossover. Um, I'm not disclosing what it is yet, just because I'm really, really secretive about crossover shit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I will. I will say this. I will say this if if you don't mind, uh, this one. But uh, the other person involved in this crossover is also a, a, a new RT Gomer Productions producer. Sweet. Oh yes, that's true. It's about uh, yeah. Me and Magic Steve did it at a uh, Con Bravo. Uh, yes. It's it was a lot of fun. Uh, I will say that, and I got to wear a corset, which kind of made me happy. So. Uh, yeah, that that's all you're getting though. I'm not giving anything yes. else away. Uh, yeah. By the way, she rocks a corset really good. <laughs> awesome. But corset. Hey, Shut up. Oh. <laughs> then they'll I've always heard. expect to see me in it. God. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry, Travis. You were saying? Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention you can also find us on rtgomer.com, and I would like to say thanks for picking us up, dude. Yeah, it's not a problem. It's a pleasure. For for well. I say you. thank you, but that's not in my character choice. <laughs> oh, so now we finally get down to me. Yay! And there's going to be a little bit more rambling. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr and other, other places like that at Gomer21XX. Uh, you can find my stuff at nerdvice.com and rtgomer.com. Seems like a theme going around here. And you can also find well, both my site and Nerdvice on Facebook as well. Go look at them, check them out, give them a good like. Um, all the latest updates, at least for my site, they will automatically go to the Facebook where they should, um, unless WordPress decides to take a crap, and then they don't go there as easily. I've, we've been having some issues with that, and we're trying to work that out. But that also goes over to the official RT Gomer Productions Tumblr, which is rtgomerprod.tumblr.com. And I myself also have a Patreon if you would like to throw money at me for the stuff that I do. If you like this show, my podcast, my gameplay videos, my reviews, you know, I'm kind of getting back into that. All that stuff, you want to throw money at it, just head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. And I would also be remiss if I did not give her a shout out this time at the end of the show. My uh, wonderful girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who is an amazing title card artist and an award-winning animator. She also has her own Patreon at account at patreon.com slash Becky Hop. If you give her enough money, she will use that award-winning animated talent, animation talent rather, to give you a 30-second uh, animation. And that's if you give her enough money at patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Oh, so with that, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Jess and Travis signing off. Take it easy. Bye.
Thespian Talk is an R.T. Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.